So what is the best bow in Valheim? Today I'll be showing you how to craft it and where to get all the ingredients for it. Since so many people starting the game won't even know this bow exists until they pick up the required ingredients to craft it, look at this video as a shortcut to that. I'll also be talking about the best arrows in the game to use with it as well. So this is the Draga Fang Bow and not only does it do the most piercing damage of any bow in the game right now, but it also has built in poison damage so anything you attack will actually start to build up and take poison damage. But what's really crazy is that you can also pair this bow with other arrow types like frost arrows or fire arrows or needle arrows for hybrid damage. So basically you'll be setting fire to enemies and poisoning them at the same time. And also the fall off from the arrow over range is minimal which makes it great for sniping long distance enemies. You can also upgrade the Draga Fang Bow all the way to level 4, which quadruples your poison damage and gives you another 10 piercing damage on top. So it's definitely worth it. Sounds great, right? Let me show you how to craft it. All I ask in return is that you drop a quick like on the video to help me out. So to craft the Draga Fang, we need 10 Ancient Bark, 20 Silver, 2 Deer Hides, and Guck. We can find both Guck and Ancient Bark in the Swampland biome, which looks like this on the map. A brown, muddy area. Very charming indeed. And I suggest that you actually build a boat to find the Swamp biome if you've not found it yet, because it's just so much more efficient than using a raft. You will need bronze nails to make a boat though, which I have another guide on linked below. So firstly, you can get Ancient Bark from the Ancient Trees, who'd have thought, which grow all over the Swamp biome so you will have an abundance of ancient bark available to you. Just chop down the tree and it will randomly drop 10 wood. Some of that wood will be ancient bark, which kind of looks like moldy planks of wood. You'll need only 10 ancient bark in total, so it's a really, really easy material to get your hands on. The second material we need is guck. Guck is also found in the swamps. You'll notice these large trees with glowing guck sacks attached to them. These trees usually have a few guck sacks attached to them and each one will drop around free guck. The issue is is that you need to access them to actually chop them off the tree. So to do this you first need to put a workbench down and then you can build wooden ladders or wooden platforms around the tree to climb it. Let me demonstrate this for you. And then you can go into your building menu and grab the wood ladder like this. And you can start building upwards to make a very long ladder all the way up to the resource that you want to farm. So here's one gold sack. Let's go ahead and get, let's go ahead and get the wood floor just here. Then we can go ahead and jump on. And then we need to get out our axe and we can we're going to drop free guck. And then after you're done, you can just carry on climbing the tree. Now you'll notice at some point after you've gone to a certain height, that the ladder will become red. So what you need to do is you need to get a wooden beam and you need to build it into the tree trunk like this. And now it's touching the tree trunk and this ladder. You can see I can now build on it and it will be structurally secure again. So it's really that easy. You can also build platforms just on the edge of the tree like this and then you can jump over to them and you can start mining some more gulch like this. And as you can see, we've dropped some more gulch down there. It's fallen onto the ground below. We can pick it up in a moment. But first, let's go ahead and jump up to this one next. Like so. And, and now we've got the last one. We can farm that. And now we've farmed all four of them on this tree. Now, as you work your way down the tree, it's always a good idea to just get your hammer back out and destroy all of the constructions that you've already made just because then you can go to the bottom of the tree and you can recover all of your materials like so. As you can see in total I've already farmed 17 gold from this one tree. The next thing you're going to need to obtain is two deer hide which obviously can be found in the starting area of the meadows. I'm sure at this point in the game you've killed a deer before and you can just shoot them with whatever bow you have at the time or sneak up to them to kill them rewarding you with two deer hide, which you need to craft the Draga bow. So the final ingredient we need is silver, which is located here in the mountain region. 
The mountain is obviously the mountainous snowy area of the map that you can't really miss. They are randomly generated all the way across the map and they look like this. And once you're here, it will be snowing and very cold. If you haven't watched my video on how to survive the mountains yet, check that out below. But essentially what you'll need in order to actually find silver is the wishbone. Get this as a drop from defeating the third boss, which is located in the swamps. After you've acquired it, you can actually activate it to equip it, and it will allow you to find hidden objects. So you basically just need to run around the mountain area, and eventually it will start to pulsate. As you can see right now, it's now pulsating. So we know we are close to silver. And the closer we get, the faster it's going to start pulsating. So just here is faster than over there. Let me get on my pickaxe and we can start mining down here. And eventually you will find a silver ore vein where you can harvest silver ore. Which looks like this. And then if you just go ahead and put the silver ore into your smelter along with some coal, you will get a silver ingot like this. Now you've gathered all the ingredients, you can go ahead and craft the Draga Fang. You'll notice that it requires a level 2 forge. Now if your forge is not level 2, you can actually upgrade it by crafting, for example, a forge cooler and then just putting it in range of the forge. Each one of these individual items will upgrade the level of the forge. As you can see, mine is currently level 4. Let's go ahead and craft it. So as you can see, at level 1, the Draga Fang Bow will do a 47 pierce damage and 5 poison damage. You're going to want to upgrade this all the way to level 4, which is its maximum upgrade rank currently. It will do 56 pierce damage and 20 poison damage, which is absolutely huge. But we can increase this damage even further with arrows. Alright, so now let's go over the best arrows in the entire game starting out we have all the physical based arrows which just do a flat piercing damage which are things like wooden arrows flint head arrows and then you get your bronze arrows and then iron arrows and then you get up to obsidian arrows while using feathers wood and obsidian you can make an obsidian arrow which does 52 pierce damage so that damage is on top of your initial bow damage as well, which is obviously really nice. The next best thing that you also get from the planes, which is a little bit more hard to come by, is needle arrows. Now, needle arrows do 62 piercing damage, which is 10 more than obsidian arrows. Now, to craft the needle arrows, you need a needle and feathers. To get the needle, you also need to go to the plains and kill death mosquitoes, and they drop one needle each time you kill one. You can also find them in chests as well, but you need four needles for each 20 you craft. So they're a little bit harder to craft, but they do do a lot more damage. Now we're going to be talking about the effect arrows. So fire arrows, which are available very early on in the game, only have a pierce damage of 11 and a fire damage of 22. Obviously these are still good if there's an enemy that's weak to fire because you set them on fire and they take a slow amount of burn damage over time. However, these are really just amazing early game and then they kind of just fall off rapidly. The next thing we have though is frost arrows and poison arrows. With the frost arrow it does 26 pierce damage and so does the poison arrow. But poison arrows do 52 poison damage and frost arrows do 52 frost damage. Now, if you're using this in conjunction with the Draga Fang Bow, which we just crafted, obviously you're already doing 20 poison damage a shot anyway. So in that case, you want to be using frost arrows because then you're doing frost damage and pierce damage and poison damage. And again, frost arrows are obtained in the mountain. Poison arrows can be obtained in the swampland. And again, depending on the enemy you're fighting, one of these might be more effective than the other. Lastly, we have silver arrows. Now, silver arrows are obtained by mining silver in the mountains and using wood and feathers to make these. Silver arrows, though, are a bit more unique because they also do more damage versus restless spirits. So ghosts, wraiths, and skeletons, I believe, as well. So essentially what they do is 52 pierce damage, which is already amazingly good, but then they do that 20 spirit damage on top of that which is very effective against any undead creatures pretty much. 
because they take additional damage. But that's pretty much it for the arrows that exist in the game currently. And obviously, a quick mention, the Draga Fang is the best bow in the game currently. Obviously, it's always going to be useful because it has that poison damage as well. But it, the game's in early access currently, so they're going to be releasing other updates for the other biomes. And you can bet that each one of those is probably going to include its own bows and other arrows that are going to advance in damage uh, with the natural progression of the game. But right now, the Draga Fang is an incredible weapon and it's going to take you up to at least the fifth boss. So I highly recommend getting the Draga Bow for that reason. Guys, if you found this video helpful, I've got some other weapon guides that you might not have found yourself. Like, for example, this Iron Sledgehammer, which just does huge AoE damage. So if you want to find out where to get those types of weapons as well, I'll leave my other guides linked below. But I hope you found this one helpful. Drop a like if you did, and I'll see you in the next one. Have a great day and goodbye.